And shame millions of Dandat Pranam in the Lord's feet of our Om Vishnu Pad, my Shiksha Guru, Om Vishnu Pad, Bhakti, Vedan Swami Maharaj. Our seven day festival in Alechua was very successful. More than 500 devotees used to come to hear. No complaint. All were very inspired and happy. I think most of all devotees are here from Alechua. Very few from here. So, I wanted to speak some general Harikatha, but we see that our whole devotees are here, not all, but our devotees must be here. Today is Bas Basant Panchmi in India, Basanta Panchmi, what, spring? Fifth day of Basant Panjim. Very auspicious. Oh, Vishnu Priya Devi birthday and Raghunath Das, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami birth. Birth are? Birth. Eh? Birth? Yes. Birth. Yes. And any other? Chakravarti Thakur. Oh, Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur? Oh, Dishatari. Very auspicious day. In India, oh, so much cold was up till now. But now, from today in India, it will begin Vasantaritu. Everywhere, yellow flowers. Like the Pitambar of Krishna. And now the sprouts will come in mangoes and all trees. New new leaves will come in red, red, reddish in all trees. And very fragrant oh, uh, air will come. Yes, so good flowers. 
but not go to smell. No, no threat. Bitter. <laughs> but there, Delhi, Chameli, Jui, Jatika, eh? oh, Malfi, Lotus flowers and others. Oh, fire is fragrant. So fragrant that air, by their loads of fragrance, they became like heavy. heavy and they cannot walk. So fast. And in this spring, Vasanti Ras of Krishna. Where in Kubardhan, Man and Chandra Sarova, where Moon stops his walking, going, coming. For how many days? Oh, one night of Brahma. One night of Brahma. Millions of years he stops there to see the dance and sing songs of Sisi Radha Govinda and Gopis. And you know that Srila Jayadeva Goswami had told about Ras Vidas that he can go Gita Govinda. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to hear and weep louder with tears, with melted hearts. And in Chaitanya Chaitanya, oh, in Vasantras, it has shown vividly the prominence of Srimati Radhika among millions of people. So this is wrong. And in same very day, of Vishnu Priya, the uh, manifestation of Prema Bhakti Swarupani. Prema Bhakti Swarupani. What? Prema Bhakti Swarupani meaning? Embodiment of Prema Bhakti So, his separation was very hard for his husband, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he took sannyas. Very, very hard. Also, the birthday of Sri Aravnath Das Goswami. They can tell him the disciple of Sarup Damod of Ayaram, Sarup Damod, and also Siksha Guru Goswami. And he has written so many stories and stuti of Radha Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of all the places, six places of Vrindavan, Radha Guru Shankar, Gilraj Guvardha. We always remember all this. His life is full of love and affection. As gopis to Rakshimati Radhika, he was dedicated. And he was Rati Manjari. And in this Leela, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami. His character is so high that it is impossible to touch his lotus feet dust, even for a oh, very high class of devotees. Srila Raghunath Das Goswami has written Vilap Kusmanji. Oh, what? Excessive or what? Love and separation and all kinds of love and affection has been given there. What a sadhak should do if he wants to enter in? 
of sweet pastimes of Krishna, especially in the love and affection of Krishna and Radhika, then he must read, he should must read, Vilap Kusmanya and other Stav and Stuti. And then today is also the but uh, separation day of manifestation of Rupa Goswami, Labhishmana Chakravarti Chakra. He again repeated the same thing. And that was Gopi's love and affection as very high stage Upapati Bhav. Otherwise, after Sudha Rupa Goswami, it has gone to where? Oh. Stop. But kindly he came and he again but repeated the same thing. So today is very auspicious day. In India or other places, we make this festival very high. We offer Radha and Krishna conjugal yellow paraphernalia, yellow cloths, yellow everything, rice, or paramana, kushpan, all yellow. Also, in this person, Panchami, we offer mango okay, manjari, manjari, mango manjari, and uh, jau ke ki bole, body, what? new coming bal. New barley. New barley. Very uh, like green. Yes. And from beginning, from today, Holy Kirtan will be shown with you. Brajame Hari Gauri Machai. Krishna with his friends, Gopikas with all Gopikas, in the guidance of Srimati Radhika, taking what? Syringe. Syringe. Oh. Playing with Krishna and they want to defeat Krishna and Krishna wants to defeat them. And very melodious song of Holi, everywhere will be stored. So many things. I remembered something, I told something. I also want to tell something. Did you do what is Tomorrow you will start again the same subject, very high subject, in Mayan. What is Bhakti? Gyani Bhakta, Suddha Bhakta, Premi Bhakta, Prempar Bhakta. And then you can decide, oh, what high class of love? of Braja. So, we will discuss there. I want to discuss some general things here, but very essential for us. If a man is wealthy, very wealthy, very wise, intelligent, of very high position, Children very educated, beautiful. Why very obedient? He has all these things which are required in our life. Then what is the use of doing bhakti or belief in God and why we should do bhajan? If you are happy in this world, then what do you think? If good children 
obedient wife or husband, all kinds of position, or very good, well-equipped houses, or very good garden. Then what is the need of doing bhajan? And to beg from all others and maintain ourselves. Why not be like that? You can speak on this subject. comfort and he feels happy and satisfied why should he use his time to do bhajan to engage in sravanam kirtanam vishnu svaranam hearing chanting and remembering the supreme first that you go ahead what is the necessity of leaving these things to live a very simple life Buddha gave the example and going begging here and there to maintain his existence. There's no necessity at all. He has everything. So it seems. But Ved Shastra, Sadguru, few Vaishnavas, they open our eyes and they make us look at the see the reality of life. You know that there was one very Beautiful boat, very huge boat. And upon that boat, there are many facilities for sleeping, eating, singing, dancing. There was a restaurant, a ballroom, everything. Mm -hmm. And the people on that boat were very, very happy. Mm -hmm. So you may think, oh, I, I would also like to go on that boat. Mm -hmm. So, if someone will sell you a ticket, please buy a ticket for my boat, the Titanic. Will you buy? Why not? Mm -hmm. It was sinking. Oh, even as it was going down beneath the waves, the band was still playing. Mm -hmm. And going down. People were still dancing and the band was playing. And it went under and everyone was killed. Mm -hmm. So you're not going that boat. Why? It's very, very comfortable. Because you know it's going down. There, the people on that boat, they are so happy. But their happiness is delusion. It is quite, ig they are ignorant. Like goats who are lining up at the slaughterhouse waiting to be killed. Mm -hmm. The goats are standing there in a line to be killed one after another. But they have no idea. Where am I? What am I doing? And what will be my fate in the very next moment? Mm -hmm. So... This is the position of all the people in this world. We think that, or we are very comfortably situated. But, at any moment, death may come. No, death will come at any moment. Old age will come. Disease will come. And again, rebirth in this world. One may think, if death will come, then again, in my next life, I will enjoy as I have enjoyed in this life. This is completely wrong. Whatever comfort or luxury or facility we have in this life is coming as a result of religious activities performed in previous lives. And as we try to enjoy in this world, we exhaust our accumulation of the results of pious activities. And when they're exhausted, then one goes down and he will suffer so much. To illustrate this point, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave a very graphic example. He explained that Maya, the material energy, 
treats the living entity in this world exactly as a king punishes a thief. Sometimes the king has a thief punished by taking him to the river and some very strong soldiers get the thief and they hold him under water and they keep him there. His lungs are bursting, some bubbles come out and he's about to die. But then in the next moment, the soldiers of the king, they lift his head above the water and he goes <gasps> and then again they push him underneath the water. And again he's suffering, his heart is beating, his lungs are burning. And then after a long time underwater when he's about to die, and again, <clears throat> and then they put him under the water. So we should understand that if we are well situated in this world, and we feel very comfortable and happy, this is only... <clears throat> only Maya is giving you breath, little breath for only a few moments. And then again, she'll push us under four or eight million. 399,000 lifetimes, many, 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 many thousands of lifetimes moving in the endless chain of birth and death uh, until again a position of little happiness comes for a moment and we go down. Hmm? But what happens when that moment of happiness comes? That means we get the human form of life and some health and strong body and good mind and good intelligence and we are not struggling for existence, at that time we have a golden chance, a golden opportunity to render service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and thus put an end to all the problems of life. One who will awaken his transcendental love for God and realize the nature of Atma, the soul, and the relationship of the Atma with the Supreme Atma, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For that person, there will be no more karma, there will be no more rebirth in this world, no more old age, disease and death. They will be liberated from this illusory material existence and enter into an eternal life of happiness in Golok Vrindavan, in the kingdom of God. So when the human form of life comes, it is very short, momentary, but it is a golden chance and a rare opportunity to make a solution forever to all of the problems of life. But when this opportunity comes to us, we become in enamored by money, by family members, by reputation, education, position in society. And in this way, this brief but valuable opportunity which has been afforded to us is completely squandered wasted, mm -hmm. only laughing, joking, singing, dancing, and going here and there and trying to enjoy just for this brief <laughs> moment. And then again we disappear down into the endless chain of birth and death, having lost our rare opportunity. And therefore all the Shastras, they inform us that Labdwa sudolabam idam bahusam bhavanti manusya matadam anicchama piyadira. Oh, those who attain this human form of life, they should understand that even though it is anitya, it is not eternal, it is momentary, just like the other forms of life. Yet still, the human form of life is artadam. It has the power to give an eternal benefit. Therefore, Quickly, rise up. Don't be sluggish. Don't be sleepy. Don't be inattentive. Don't nod off at the wheel. Hmm? If you are driving and you become sleepy and you nod off at the wheel, what will happen? Disaster. So now you can understand in the human form of life, your hands are on the wheel. You can express your free will to turn in the direction of animal life or to turn in the direction of godly life. So at that moment, Shastra tells us, turn don't fall asleep at the wheel and make a wrong turning down into the animal species. Hmm? Oh, but I have no time for sadhan, for my, for hearing, chanting and remembering because I will have to work hard to do so many things. 
for my happiness in this world. But Shasta said, Nisreyasaya Vishakhausavatasya. Don't try to get the happiness which comes from physical sense gratification, from the indulgence of the senses of this physical body. Don't even try for it. Why? This type of happiness is very low class. It is available in all species of life. Mm -hmm. Hogs and dogs and pigs and camels. All types of animals. They enjoy eating, sleeping, sex life and martial arts. Mm -hmm. They are expert in all of these things. Why are we trying to do this? And what's more, if you will endeavor for these things, then you're wasting your time because the happiness which is derived from the contact of the senses with their objects comes automatically by the karmas we performed in our previous life. Srimad Bhagavatam informs us, my dear friend, if you are actually a little bit intelligent and philosophically inclined, then you can understand that the happiness derived through the senses of the mature body comes to us automatically as a result of our fruitive karma. And therefore, it is a complete waste of time to endeavor for that which will come of its own accord. So the Shastras, the Vedas of India, Bhagavad Gita, Upanishads, Puran, Srimad Bhagavatam, the Sadhus, Sadhguru, the pure devotees and spiritual masters, they give us this instruction, Oh my dear friend, my dear brother, don't waste any time, but at once, with so much energy and enthusiasm, give all of your time to the practice of Bhakti Yoga, to the practice of devotion to God, whereby you can discover eternal happiness, eternal peace and beauty, knowledge and realization in the loving service of the all-attractive Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sisi Radha and Krishna. Oh, you should speak on very brief of the life of Sri Raghunath Das Goswami and his, some of the teachings in brief. So, so why he left his own positions and how? So, today is the appearance day of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. And so, Srila Gurudev has ordered me to speak a few words about his life. Why? Because he is the perfect illustration of our subject matter today. Why is it that someone who has all material facilities should oh, forsake those things and dedicate themselves to the service of God and how to do it. You know that in India about 500 years ago in the village of Krishnapur in the district of Adi Saptagram there was a very very wealthy and powerful landowner his name was Govardhan Majunda and his brother Hiranya Majunda, together they ruled over a very large area of seven villages and they had a huge income of, of more than a million gold coins every year. At that time, that was fabulous wealth. Fabulous wealth. We cannot imagine. And between the two brothers, they had only one child, Raghunath. He was a young boy. And therefore, being the sole heir of this vast fortune, he was, every facility was given to him and everyone had so much affection for him. Yet, in his childhood, he was very fortunate because he had the association of Srila Haridas Thakur, Sri Advaita Acharya and his Diksha Guru, Sri Yadunandan Acharya. All our associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and great, perfect, realized, pure devotees. When Haridas Thakur would come to his, visit his home to give Harikata there, he would go running as a small boy, oh Dadu Dadu, and jump in his lap. And he would hear from Haridas Thakur, Srimad Bhagavatam, 
Dhruv Charitra, the life history of Dhruva Maharaj. Prahlad Charitra, the life history of Prahlad Maharaj, Ambrish Maharaj, and many Upakyan from Srimad Bhagavatam. And he would receive instructions from Haridas Thakur about the glory of chanting Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And by such excellent association, Mm -hmm. He developed strong faith in Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he knew that the goal of life is to develop love for Krishna. He knew this fact. And if someone has even a little desire to know and love God, automatically renunciation or detachment from this world, mm -hmm. a freedom from infatuation for the glittering of the external material energy of God. Oh, this infatuation will go away and all things will appear to be dry, tasteless, temporary and like a burning poison. Hmm? With sugar on the outside, but when you take it inside, only pain and suffering. Everything of this world is of that nature. So even in his childhood and youth, Raghunath Das, at that time Raghunath Das, he understood this fact. So, when he was a small boy, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in the year 1510, he took sannyas and he tried to go to Vrindavan, but Nityananda brought him back to Shantipur. It was at that time when Raghunath Das was a small boy, he had the first chance to have the darshan of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to serve him, to take his remnants. And by seeing Mahaprabhu, hearing from him, and taking his remnants, he developed a very strong, intense greed to develop love for Krishna. So as he grew up, he had no attachment to his household life. His parents made a plan. Oh, he's not so interested in the things of this world. But we know how to bind him down, to tie him down in such a way that he'll forget about spiritual life and become an ordinary, regular, materialistic person. How is that? We'll arrange his marriage with a very beautiful, sweet young girl who will serve him and please him in all ways. In this way, he'll forget about his desire to become a renunciant and he'll stay in material life. But it didn't work. He had no interest in his new bride either. But again and again, he tried to run away from home to meet with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Jagannath Puri. But every time his father would send guards on horseback and they would ride through the night and they would catch up with him and they would bring him back to his father. His father and mother were becoming desperate. His mother was hysterical. Oh, you should get a chain and chain him. His father said, what can I do? I already applied the heaviest chain of all, a wife, a living chain. If a living chain cannot bind him, then what will a lifeless chain do? It's very difficult to control a person who has become maddened with attachment for the lotus feet of Satinandan Gora Hari. Mm -hmm. So, in this way, he tried to run away again and again, but his father always caught him. But then, something wonderful happened. Mm -hmm. Nityananda Prabhu was traveling here and there, and he came oh, on the other side of the Ganga to a place called Panihati. And there, he was doing Harinam Sankirtanam with oh, hundreds of his associates. Raghunath Das begged permission from his father. Oh my dear father, please give me permission to go and have the darshan of the lotus feet of Nityananda Prabhu. Nityananda Prabhu is the incarnation of Baldev, Krishna's brother, the embodiment of Sandini Shakti, all types of spiritual power, spiritual strength. So with permission of his father and accompanied by so many gods just to make sure that nothing until what would happen along the way. Raghunath Das went to Panihati and had the darshan of Nityananda Prabhu. From far away he was giving obeisances. Nityananda Prabhu said, hey, one thief has come, come here, I want to punish you. And Raghunath Das tried to get away. But Nityananda Prabhu has very long arms, you know, reaching down to his knees just to catch those who try to run away from him. So quickly he bounded and caught that thief and put him on the ground and kept his lotus feet upon his head. I'll punish you. You are a thief. Why? Because you are trying to take my property without my permission. 
This is the definition of a thief who tries to take your property without your permission. Mm -hmm. But Nityananda Rao said, you know the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that is Radha and Krishna, they are my property, unless, oh, you come to me first to take permission from me, you cannot take them. So Nityananda Rao said, I will punish you, and the punishment is you should serve all Vaishnavas. Mm -hmm. So then, Raghunath Das, he made, managed a very big feast, and he fed all the Vaishnavas and Nityananda Rao. And Nityananda Prabhu, by the power of his praying, he called Mahaprabhu there. And Raghunath Das had the darshan of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu oh, for a few moments. And then he disappeared. Hmm? What is the meaning? Nityananda Prabhu is Akhanda Guru Tattva. He is the original, hmm, undivided, sum total of Guru Tattva. We see that Raghunath Das, he wanted to run away from his home to escape the shackles of household life and the bewilderment of wealth and reputation and fame. Hmm? He tried again and again by his own power, yet his own power was not strong enough. Even if one has the desire to realize God, to serve God and to give up the bondage of this material world, though his desire is very strong, Hmm? Maya, the material energy, is stronger. The jiva, the soul, is tiny, insignificant. No one can have the strength to escape from the bondage of this world unless they will submit themselves at the lotus feet of Nityananda Prabhu. Hmm? So we see that Nityananda Prabhu is not visible to our eyes today, yet he remains eternally present in this world in the form of Sri Guru. So here, the teaching is. One should surrender himself unconditionally at the lotus feet of Sri Guru. And what did Sri Guru tell him to do? Oh, serve all Vaishnavas. Hmm? So by this rendering service to Sri Guru and Sri the Vaishnavas, then one will attain their blessings. Nityananda Prabhu gave blessings to Raghunath Das that very soon you will come out from your uh, situation, from your, uh, uh, you will escape from your trap, from your imprisonment by your father and family members. And very soon, you will attain the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he will put you under the guidance of Swarup Dhammada. Mm -hmm. So, all of this came to pass. Mm -hmm. Oh, inadvertently, I missed one very important teaching here. Prior to his meeting with Nityananda Prabhu, again, when Raghunath Das was a little older, for a second time, he had met with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. At that time, Mahaprabhu could see his eagerness to leave his household life. But at that point, he thought that it was somewhat inappropriate. Because his devotion and his renunciation was not yet mature. So Mahaprabhu told him, don't be a crazy fellow. Again and again you try to run away and you are unsuccessful. You know that you cannot attain the lotus feet of Krishna or cross over this ocean of material existence by behaving like a psychiatric patient. Hmm? Don't be a psychiatric patient. Hmm? If you want to cross over the endless ocean of material existence, you can do it very carefully in stages. First, I want to give you this instruction. What is that? Markata vairagya nakaro loka dekaya yata yogya vishai bunda anasaktaya. Told him, don't practice the renunciation of a monkey. Hmm? Only to make a show to other people. You know that monkeys, they are very renounced. They have no clothes. They have no fine house. Hmm? They live only in the forest in the tree. They go from tree to tree yeah? and they sit there and they don't eat very, very luxurious food, only some fruits and nuts available in the forest. So monkey is a great sannyasi. Everyone can see. No. Monkey is sitting very still and calm and his eyes are looking here and there. He's waiting for someone to come past with any spectacles or, or bananas and as soon as he gets the chance, he will jump. And then his real nature will come out, how he is very ferocious and dangerous and attached 
and very lusty and greedy. And the monkey, he keeps so many female monkeys and engages in lust with them also. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, don't make a show of renunciation. Why? Oh, this show of renunciation is just another kind of sense gratification. It is simply to procure from yourself the adoration of the ignorant people of this material world. So if your heart will become polluted by the desire for pratishta to be recognized and honored and receive fame from others as being a great spiritualist, oh, then you will not make any advancement at all, but rather your heart will become overburdened with anarcha material desires and just like a monkey, you will seem to be renounced. But when an opportunity comes, you will fall down and your life will be spoiled. So Mahabhu told him, you can be in this world and you can enjoy the facilities of this world in an appropriate way, but don't become attached to them. Rather, what should you do? Hmm? You should behave like an ordinary person. Give respect to your mother and father. You can serve guests and behave like an ordinary religious person, not irreligious person. Don't behave like an ordinary person in America. Behave like an ordinary person who is very religious in India 500 years ago. This is what it means, behave like loka biyabaha. Hmm? Behave like an ordinary religious person in India at that time 500 years ago. And inside, in your heart, develop nishta very strong, firm, unswerving faith and determination to be absorbed in hearing, chanting and remembering about Krishna. And if you will do this, then very soon Krishna himself will make an arrangement to extricate you from your bondage. That arrangement came in the form of Nityananda Prabhu. Nityananda Prabhu gave blessings and then shortly after that, what happened? Oh, one day in the very early morning before sunrise the Diksha Guru of Raghunath Das came to his house and told him oh my Pujari has left his service and he's gone home so he will listen to you I know go to him and persuade him again to take up his service so then Raghunath Das yes of course Gurudev let's go there and they came out from the house the guards who were surrounding him saw that he was leaving in the company of his guru. So they were not suspicious. When they came out from the house, Raghunath Das said, Oh Gurudev, there's no need for you to trouble yourself with this. You can return to your home. I will go and see the Pujari and send him along to resume his service in the temple. So then he gave pranam to his Gurudev and Jadunandanachari returned to his home. And Raghunath Das, he took this chance. He thought, this is my chance now, I'm out of the home, no one suspects anything, they think I'm with my guru, now I'll run away. But I'll not go by the main roads, I'll go through the jungles and villages, because if I go by the main road, they'll catch me. And Raghunath Das began to run. The journey will take 30 days on foot to walk from Bengal to Puri in Orissa, 30 days on foot. But he completed that in only 12 days. Why? He was running, breathlessly running, not taking any rest. Oh, sometimes he would lie down for a few moments in the, in the cow barn of some farmers. He would take a little milk or chickpeas and again, only every um, four days, three or four days, he took a little milk or chickpeas and he came running. And finally, he arrived in Puri. So here, Raghunath Daska Swami, he's showing us the intensity of the desire of a person which is required to become successful in spiritual life. We cannot have only a little desire. It will not do. It's like riding a bicycle. If you don't pedal, it will fall over, especially going up a hill. So, Rupa Goswami Pad instructed us, enthusiasm and confidence in this path of bhakti and also be somewhat patient. If the result will not come at once, keep going. Uh, confidence and patience and enthusiasm should never be slackened, but intensified every day 
hmm? to try to intensify our vows and renew dedication on the path of spiritual life, then Sadhvi Bhakti, Prasiddhiti, Bhakti must become successful. After 12 days, he arrived in Puri, very, very skinny hmm? and dirty and exhausted. Hmm? And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw him, hmm? then his heart was melted and tears came in his eyes. With his own hands, he lifted Raghunath Das from the ground and began to wipe the soil from his body with his own cloth. Hmm? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's heart was melted, seeing the determination of this boy. It is true. Hmm? Bhagavan Sri Narayan is stated, ninth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, if anyone will leave the comforts of this world, wife, home, family, wealth, and education, all of these things, for my sake, how can I ever give that person up? I can never give him up. Hmm? If we want to melt the heart of Supreme Lord, or being under the guidance of Sadhguru and Vaishnavas, and undergoing many difficulties in their service, then surely the heart of the Lord will melt for us. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was feeling like this, and very mercifully, he took the hand of Raghunath Das and put his hand in the hand of Swarup Damodar. He told him, Oh, Swarup Damodar, he knows more than me. You should learn everything from him. And in this way, he was accepted like a son of Swarup Damodar and began to live in his ashram in Puri. So after some time, Raghunath Das, he was thinking, I have left my home and everything, but now what is my duty? To leave everything, this is not the goal of life. Those who are Mayavadi, impersonists, they think if you leave everything, now you are perfect because you are liberated. Huh? But this is not liberation. Mukti pranitarupam swarupaina vyavastiti. Liberation means to be situated in one's swarup, one's eternal transcendental spiritual form by which one can render service to Radha and Krishna. Hmm? This is actual supreme vimukti, supreme liberation. So Raghunath Das, he did not know what is the procedure and the method to attain the perfection of life. And very humbly, though he wanted to ask Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he went to Swarup Damodar. He was very humble and polite and very shy. So he did not speak directly. But rather, he posed the question to Swarup Damodar and Swarup Damodar told Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Raghunath Das has this question to put before your Lordship. He has left his material life, but now what is his duty? What should he do? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Oh, Saurabh Damodar knows better than me, but if you want to hear some words from me, then kindly pay attention. He told him, Gramya Kata Anashuni Be, Gramya Vartana Kohi Be, Balona Kai Be, Arbalona Kori Be. You should not speak mundane talk. Hmm? You should not discuss the comings and goings and profit and loss, victory and defeat, hmm? health and illness and wealth and happiness and distress of this material world. Don't discuss these things. All this village talk, hmm? it will destroy your good intelligence for understanding what is spiritual life. And as you should not speak it, you should also very, be very careful not to hear gossip. He said that she said that he said that she said that he said that I said that you said that. Hmm? Don't listen to these things. It will ruin your consciousness completely. And therefore, huh, giving up the association of those who are absorbed in mundane worldly gossip. Hmm? Also, balona paribe ar balona kaibe. Don't wear very luxurious, silken, royal, fashionable, and exotic, in vogue, designer clothes. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. This will make your ego get bigger and bigger and bigger with more and more bodily identification. Mm -hmm. And also, Bauna Kaibe. Don't eat very palatable food. Mm -hmm. If you eat like a king, very soon you'll start looking for a queen. Mm -hmm. Oh, your belly will be full and you'll become lusty. So eat very, very simple food. Mm -hmm. And not so much, only little. Oh, but this is not spiritual life. This is only some yam niyam, some rules and regulations to make a platform for practice. What is the practice? Amani namana dahiya, sada krishna nama labe, brajirada krishna seva, manasa karibe.
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed him, always be very meek and humble. Hmm? Give honor to everyone, not only to superiors, to equals and juniors and even to an ant. Give respect to every living entity. Hmm? And don't be uh, hankering, don't have a passion for others to recognize and appreciate you. Hmm? Depreciate yourself and appreciate others. And being in this mood, Sada Krishna Navalabe always chant the names of Radha Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. And while chanting, don't empty your mind. Now people tell, oh, you should chant Hare Krishna, but don't remember anything. Always remember Krishna and never forget him, except for while you're chanting. When you're chanting, then you can forget him. This is common teaching today. Huh? No, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching is Braja Radha Krishna Seva Manasa Koribe. At the time of chanting, you should engage your mind in the service of Radha and Krishna in Braj. Mahaprabhu told him, Tunada Pi Suni Chena Toro Riva Sishtana Amani Namana Dena Kirtanya Sadari. Being more humble than a blade of grass, more tolerant than a tree giving respect to others and not hankering for respect for oneself, continuously chant Harinam. And if you want to know more details about this, you can learn it from Swarup Damodar. Hmm? So having received these instructions, Swarup Damodar also gave him more instructions. Why? Swarup Damodar is the incarnation of Lalita Saki, hmm? the very nearest and dearest friend of Srimati Radhika. So those who want to become the dasis, the maidservants of Radhika, They'll have to have the shelter and guidance of Lalita Saki. Thank you. Jai Jai Radha Ramana Haripo